Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first, I just want to begin by welcoming you, thanking you for what uh, you do for our country and for what those who you lead uh, are doing at this moment uh, for our country. This is an important hearing. I think we all realize that, and every year we realize it. And I, I must say, when I left here to go to another hearing, uh, there was a, uh, I just felt a, uh, not a sense of uh, uh, despair or hopelessness, but, uh, but a sense of gratitude that we have people like you and the hundreds of thousands of men and women you lead who are willing to serve each day, sometimes at greatly risk to themselves, uh, to look out for all of us and our families. The, um, the threat landscape in our country continues to evolve. Uh, and it's uh, critical that uh, the United States be prepared to respond to whatever comes next. In the recent years, so uh, when we uh, have uh, held our annual All Threats hearing, the panel has testified before us in this room that domestic terrorism is a primary terroristic threat in the United States. Uh, specifically, the most uh, consistent threat comes from white supremacists who commit, who commit acts of uh, violence motivated by race or by uh, religion. In the last month, as a result of the horrific terrorist attack in, um, in Israel committed by Hamas and the ensuing war in Gaza, both of which have tragically left thousands of uh, innocent civilians dead and hundreds held hostage. We have seen a rise in anti-Semitic and Islam Islamophobic uh, rhetoric and threats in the United States. The, the nonprofit security grant program was established, I think, in 2004. Uh, it was established as a means of providing security funding for nonprofit organizations at high risk of terrorist attack, including religious organizations. And I have a question, Mr. Secretary. How is the Department of Homeland Security, how, how is the Department of Homeland Security, rather, communicating with high risk communities about this grant program in light of the increase in reports of threats against Jewish? Uh, against Muslim and Arab uh, communities and institutions. Senator, um, first and foremost, thank you for always being a champion of the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security and, and across uh, the federal enterprise. Um, your, your words of praise, sometimes delivered from the Senate floor, um, reverberate throughout our department and are profoundly appreciated uh, by, by all. The Nonprofit Security Grant Program is a critically important tool in equipping um, places of worship, um, schools, other nonprofit organizations with the funds they need to build their own security uh, so that their members can be safe and secure. Uh, we have seen in this administration an increase in the funding for that Nonprofit Security Grant Program. We have, specific to your question, Senator, engaged in extensive outreach to uh, communities of all faiths to make sure they're aware of the program. We've also made the application process easier so that it is more accessible because we well recognize that there may be target-rich institutions that are resource poor, and we have to make the program available to all. Good. Thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Um, another question, if I could, uh, Mr. Secretary, for for you. Um, early uh, early this month, uh, President Biden announced a supplemental funding request, as we all know, that includes uh, 13.6 billion dollars to address uh, the needs at our border. Uh, the request uh, would allow DHS to fund efforts to counter fentanyl trafficking, uh, support border operations, and personnel needs and support state and local organizations that pay for shelter and services for migrants released from uh, DHS custody. Uh, my question, uh, Mr. S Mr. Secretary, is could you just expand for us for a few minutes on this supplemental request and share with us, if you would, why the funding for these efforts in your departments is so critical? Senator, two foundational points. One is that we are dealing fundamentally with the broken immigration system and the additional funding, which is critically needed, is a tourniquet. The enduring solution is to fix uh, the system, number one. Number two, we are seeing an unprecedented level of migration 
throughout our hemisphere, not only at our southern border, but also throughout our hemisphere and quite frankly, around uh, the world. What we have sought through our supplement, supplemental funding request is additional resources in a number of different ways. Um, more agents and officers. Every single year since 2006, we have relied on the Department of Defense to supplement U.S. Customs and Border Protection personnel. That is a, not a model uh, of, of government uh, efficiency. So we have sought additional personnel, not only in U.S. Customs and Border Protection, but in Immigration and Customs Enforcement and in U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services, so we cover the spectrum of the immigration process, the enforcement, the processing, the asylum adjudications, and the like. We have sought additional funds for facilities, detention facilities, to ensure that we can continue to expand our implementation of expedited removal, soft-sided facilities, given the number of individuals we have to process. We've also sought additional transportation resources so that we can move people efficiently and as needed from a border patrol station to an immigration and customs enforcement facility or so that we can actually remove individuals so that we have the flight capacity to run as many removal flights as is warranted. Those are some examples of the enforcement resources that we have sought and the processing resources that we have sought in the supplemental funding request. Uh, my, my, I, my time's not sufficient to allow me, uh, to allow me, to, uh, uh, Mr. A, uh, Ms. Abizad, I, was eight, I, I don't have enough time to let you respond as well. I'm gonna just say the question for the record and ask you to respond in, in writing, but here's the question. If you would, Director Ray and Director Abizad, how has Iran's role, either directly or indirectly, in the ongoing conflict in the Middle East impacted the threat landscape in the United States? And if you could respond to that for the record, I'd be most grateful. Thank you all again for your service and for your leadership. Thank you.